Hello, I'm Freezing Inferno, and welcome to week four of the Let's Play Fall Fantacular. Tetris. That's right. Tetris. This is a dual challenge this week here. In a sense. Because you have the obvious first challenge of play Tetris for 15 minutes and get the best score you can to beat the other competitors. But you also have a very, very difficult challenge. And that comes in your commentary. <laughs> because you... Me and the competitors, all you guys, we have to somehow make a video of Tetris for 15 minutes. An entertaining thing that the judges will give a high score to and say, That video? I like this. I'm gonna give it a five. It was a good video. 15 minutes of Tetris. <laughs> so, this is really stretching the boundaries of how entertaining you can be. Very devious. Now, I remember. A guy you might have heard of, an LP guy, and Deceased Crab did an actual honest-to-god LP of Tetris. And a lot of people I knew kind of made fun of him for that and said, Hoo -hoo, look at that guy, LP Tetris. I'd sure never LP Tetris. Well, look at me, the big guy here, lp Tetris. Well, I guess not technically lp but it might as well be. I've been treating these entries in the Fall Fantacular as actual LPs. If I were to do an LP of Tetris, it'd kind of be like this. Yeah. I mean, really, what can you say about Tetris? You can say quite a lot about Tetris, but before I say things about Tetris, I need to explain a little something. It won't make sense if I don't. You see, we have a custom challenge this week to sing a song to Tetris music. And I'm going to do just that as soon as the loop ends here in about three seconds. Enjoy! In the Soviet Union in 1984, there lived a comrade named Alexei Padinov. In his spare time on his Electronic 60, he created an interesting computer game. It's not lame. He based it off of game Tetrami knows. You control the falling pieces like so. Pretty soon every able comrade they were saying Game is so rad, just one more level, just one more level Before they knew it, it was done But they would play on, never stopping for anyone Till the game was done One, two, three, four Tetris on the fucking floor Then came Spectrum Holobyte with IBM PC version A crypt America by storm But the reds are going all over the place And nobody seems to know just who the copyright is for Through the door then Elor Group, they decide to step in. Nintendo, Atari, Mirosoft, Coraline. Nintendo wins, they get the Tetris, it becomes the Game Boy's bestest tangent, forced to scrap other copies, toss every misshape and block. Our Nintendo is king, they deserve the great block matching, and that's why I sing. Whew! Those with a keen ear, or the serendipity to look down at the video description and read the lyrics to the song I just sang, We'll note that it actually covers the history of Tetris, or rather, the history of the infamous Tengen Tetris legal battles. Which, if you remember from last week's video of Road Blasters, another Tengen game, I made mention of a documentary entitled From Russia with Love, made by the BBC, talking about the history of Tetris and all its legal mumbo-jumbo and people publishing the game without properly having the rights, you know, stuff like that. And it's a huge coincidence that this week we're playing Tetris. Polly did mention this in the thread. It's not because I did it. It's not because I plugged the documentary and she went, Tetris! Genius! I'm going to take this idea from Fresno because he is a genius and he has great hair. Only one of those things is true. I do have great hair. <laughs> nah, but no really. I hope you did watch that documentary because I rewatched it because of what I said and it's really good. Tetris is also really good. Tetris may be the most popular puzzle game. I mean, it's certainly sold enough copies. I would call it the most popular puzzle game. Of course, I don't have any resources to back this outlandish claim, but my common sense is telling me that it was packed into the Game Boy and the Game Boy sold a shitload, so Tetris must have sold a lot, right? R right? Am I right, guys? That being said, why don't I actually try to talk about Tetris a bit? I mean, just like I said in the song, you've got, well, not Tetrominoes, because Tetrominoes are five. And I guess due to his uh, Electronica 60s limitations, I mean, 
computers in 1984 had what? Fucking hundreds of kilobytes of memory at best or some shit like that? I don't know. I wasn't alive and using computers in the 1980s. So, but yeah, I guess his hardware limitations could only let him make four shapes. Tetrads. So, four. And you just match them, like so. And try to create lines out of them. I'm actually explaining Tetris. This is what I have become to. I'm just... This is just my natural state. I'm kind of an informative LP or so I just naturally have to, to say. This is what you do in Tetris. You match shapes and make lines and try not to let these things pile up to the top of the screen or else you lose. Simple as that. Yet it's so goddamned addicting. I mean, I've been playing lots of Tetris. It's surprisingly fun, and I'm really not the biggest Tetris fan. Like, it's a fun puzzle game. Certainly a really good one you can play, but I'm just not that into puzzlers. Like, I like Poyo Pop a bit. Panel de Pan is okay. But other than that, I haven't really played any other puzzle games. My favorite puzzle game would actually uh, probably be Dr. Mario. That's a good one. I like Dr. Mario. A lot of nostalgic memories with that. Not so much with Tetris, because... Well, at this point I'm just gonna take this time, I mean... The competitors are gonna have their own different ways to do commentary on this thing and try to make Tetris interesting. Because really, it's about the commentary here, right? So, I'm just, I'm just gonna drop the charades and we're just gonna talk dude to dude, guy to guy, chick to chick. Me to you. Let's just talk. I'm just gonna share some stories with you. Hope that's okay. Hope you like that. Hope you like that Tetris! Oh boy! But yeah. Now, I never actually had a copy of Tetris with my Game Boy. I got my Game Boy in 1993 with the Jurassic Park video game. I was eight years old. And as you know, if you were an eight-year-old boy, you were probably into fucking dinosaurs. And you were like, these are the coolest creatures to have ever walked the planet, oh my god. Now, cashing in on that at the same time in the year of 1993 was a little film by Steven Spielberg called Jurassic Park. So, I rode that gravy train so hard. I was like, oh my god, mom, I need all these Jurassic Park action figures and stuff. So, my family gets me a Game Boy with Jurassic Park for the Game Boy for Christmas. That game's hard. I never beat it. I, I, I think the farthest I ever gotten it was like level 5, and then I loaned it to somebody and I lost it. That's another thing. Lending games. Because while we're on that subject, I'm talking about Game Boy. I remember 1995. I didn't have any fancy-ass Super Nintendo or PlayStation or whatever, so what I would do is I would loan my Game Boy out for NES games. I remember distinctly doing this for a little game you might have heard of. Oh, not that, not that big of a deal. Just some obscure little platformer called Mega Man 2. I could not get past the uh, guy in Wily 3 or 4. The fucking stupid Crash Bomb boss is poorly designed. I don't like it. I really don't like it. Now another time. <laughs> oh, this bit me in the ass. This was a bit later. Maybe like. It was after 1995, because I got the Super Nintendo. But it is still Game Boy related, because, like, over the Christmas break, I talked to a friend, and I lent him uh, my Game Boy, because the only game I had for my Super Nintendo was Donkey Kong Country, and he already had that, so I lent him my Game Boy for Star Fox, which was a radical game, because, see, in Coast of Newfoundland, you're, like, four years behind on technology. Oh, and now I'm on level 10 and I'm fucking up, incidentally. So this is about as high as I'm gonna get. A score. But anyway, I lend this game to my friend. I lend this game away to my friend for uh, Star Fox. I'm playing Star Fox. Yeah, I'm kinda fucked! I almost got 40,000 points. That ain't bad. But yeah. Okay. Lend game. Get Star Fox. Star Fox is really cool. But my family's like, you lent your Game Boy out for that. Well, you shouldn't have done that. I mean, what if you get a game for Christmas? That's not likely. 
Oh, let's put in our high score here. I beat the fuck out of Howard. I bumped Lance right off the scoreboard. Go back to Pokemon, you bastard. I'm sorry, I'm distracting from the story. So, Christmas Day comes. We're opening gifts. It's great. It's wonderful. What's this? Operation C for the Game Boy? Hmm. What's this? Kid Dracula for the Game Boy? I'm just gonna fill the next five minutes with me playing more Tetris, because might as well have a 15 minute video. It's in the rules. So I get two Game Boy games for Christmas, and I have no Game Boy, so I had to call up my friend like, Sam, Sam, Sam! For the love of God, give me back my Game Boy. I'm, I'm gonna give you back Star I gotta play these games. And Operation C and Kid Dracula ended up becoming two of my favorite Game Boy games. Both by Konami. Operation C was my first Contra, and I did do an LP of it, and I didn't die once. Mainly because I spammed the living hell out of the, uh, fucking, you know, sprite gun thing. Homing gun. Whatever you want to call it. Well, it's not whatever you want to call it, because that's the right name for it. Goose. Oh, that Game Boy of mine, but the thing died on me. My old brick Game Boy doesn't work anymore. It's still here somewhere. Like, part of the border around the screen is gone, and it's full of stickers, but it's still here somewhere. I haven't the heart to throw it out. If I need to play something on the old Game Boy now, I've got the Super Game Boy, or I've got an old antique Game Boy Color from ten years ago. Lime green. In short, I'm just a portable gamer. And you can't help but not like portable gaming. I mean, who doesn't like portable gaming? And, well, the start of it was Tetris! Not really the start, I guess, but it really popularized it. I mean, honestly, did you hear of anybody playing the goddamn Atari Lynx? No! You heard of people playing the Game Boy. And it was like, whoa, Game Boy! It's like, it's like Nintendo, but, but in your hand! Oh my god! I guess you had some people who played sick at Game Gear, I mean... Then again, I never really knew anybody with Sega. I think my cousins had the Genesis. I remember playing Sonic 2 on that once. Years ago. Incidentally, uh, the reason I'm doing this video early is because uh, that same cousin is getting married this weekend! So, tomorrow, I'm out of here. That's why I'm doing my video early. Which is actually probably going to bite me in the ass because nobody has posted a video as I record this. And I've got a good theory about that. They're waiting for the first video to go up, so they can be like, Okay, 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 fucking, fucking Tajir got, uh, 30,000. I have to beat that. So every competitor now is gonna see my 39,000 and practice their asses off to beat that. And I'm gonna be bone fucked. Unless I get really lucky and somebody... Is like I, I can't I can't top that for us now. I'm just gonna have to put up this video because I gotta. But I think we all know who's gonna be the top scorer. I think we all know. I don't even need to say it. I don't even need to say it. Because ambiguity is a good storytelling device. And it helps you form your own assumptions and imaginations. It's whatever you want it to be. So whoever it is you think is going to be the top scorer is who's going to be the top scorer. I certainly have my own assumptions. You certainly have your own assumptions. Maybe our assumptions are the same. Maybe they're different. I don't know. I can't read your mind here. I'm just doing a video for the internet of Tetris, which is a mighty fine puzzle game. It's making me want to go play Tetris DS now. I actually have that. If there's something in need of a goddamn, like, DS budget line, it's Tetris DS. Come on! 40 bucks for a Tetris game that you made, like, four years ago, Nintendo? Come on! Fucking lower the price on that thing. You're lowering the price on Super Paper Mario and Punch-Out and Twilight Princess and Junk. That's a good start. Give me my cheapo Tetris. Or I'll just go get a Game Boy card of Tetris from eBay or something. Lord knows I've bought enough games from these summer things. I haven't bought Dynamite Heady yet. But I might. If I see Tetris on my vacation, I just might buy it. I'm so tempted to. Oh, we're coming to the tail end of this video. Aren't you, aren't you sad that I don't get to tell you any more stories? Well, I'll get to tell you stories next week. I hope you enjoyed 
my ravings and rantings and my tales. I really hope you do. Because it's fun to just shoot the shit and play Tetris, you know? Good game. Give it another go. I do believe we're nearly at time. There we are. We'll just stop here. I've been Freezing Inferno. This has been 15 Minutes of Tetris. See you next week.